When a 38-year-old Danagogo Wanike Briggs emerged the governorship candidate of the Young Progressives Party in River State, many believed that the time has come for the younger generation to take their place in the nation's polity. Wanike Briggs, who was the only aspirant in the party's primary election, was elected through a unanimous voice vote by the 130 delegates who participated in the exercise in Port Harcourt, the state capital. Speaking shortly after the election, Wenike Briggs promised to uh, give a hot contest in the 2023 governorship polls in the state, saying the YPP has all it takes to sack the ruling People's Democratic Party from office. Well, we have with us now the River State YPP governorship candidate, Dana Gogo Wenike Briggs, to discuss his plans for the state in the event that he becomes the governor of the state. Good to have you on Arise News, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Really straight into it, it seems you're quite confident you can upseat the current uh, PDP-led government in the in River State. What would be your plans for the lives of citizens and uh, elevating uh, River State in general if you were to win come this Saturday? Okay, thank you very much for having me here on the rise. Um, well, I, would, I think I'll start from the second question because the plans for actually having or improving the lives of rivers people is captured in what we actually call 3E agenda. Education, employment, and entrepreneurship. We believe this is the basic uh, system that can be put in place to make this state strive you know, to whatever level because we also see that in the in the in the world you know these are basic things that actually can put any society uh, in the form that can actually promote it so uh, in terms of you know breaking down into this three agenda one of the major things we actually realize is that we noticed that rivers people were basically very unemployable you know so that led us to where we decided to see how to educate them formally or and informally in terms of being employable enough you know to actually get into this to, to the fact where they can get jobs you know because according to national bureau of statistics 43.7 percent of rivers people are basically unemployed so even if we get get these factories in we get these uh, industries in you know in some form to see how to help the rivers person you know we also notice that they are unemployable so that's where the education comes in you know and going deeper then we also notice that the smes in river state are basically not too uh, strong in terms of building a stable um, economy. So we are also looking at the fact where we are going to strengthen SMEs. We are going to put them in the, in the form where, you know, it can actually grow and be robust enough to uh, have a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of uh, businesses strive, you know, successfully out of it. Well, according to a NAP poll, the PDP is likely to win the election in River State, while also recognizing the SDP's Magnus Abbey as gaining momentum. Now, out of the top seven, the YPP was actually not mentioned in the poll. So I'd like to know what assurance or what makes you confident that you can actually win the election on Saturday. Uh, when you say is likely to win the election. I think that should be left for the people of River State to decide. Well, YPP is a new party, we are less than six years old, and is a product that is striving. Well, uh, I think the seven-man um, candidate that was actually in, invited, I made the call to find out why the Young Progressive Party, because in the states, I represent the youth. In short, a lot of people know me as the youth governor. I represent the youth, and I wondered why I was invited. But nevertheless, they, they, they had to go with familiar faces that they have seen over the past few years. So I'm thinking that's what really happened. Oh, we just know this person. Oh, I think we should just call this person. And uh, they don't really believe in a uh, new product. So we're trying to sell ourselves, and we have sold ourselves pretty well, you know, confident enough that in between three local governments, we have very strong, formidable forces, people who believe 
in our youthfulness, who believe in our visions, who believe that at this point of where River State is, there should, they should be need for change. I always tell my followers, when a bulb is bad, a bulb in your house is bad, you don't take it to an electrician to fix it. You have to go to a store and get a new one. We have to, in our own understanding, in our own um, observation, we have found that, that a whole lot of things, a whole lot of uh, things have gone bad. And there are YPPs here to fix it. We are very confident based on the fact that we are professionals. We are standing, you know, based on the experience that we have had over the, four, uh, the past few years. Professionally, I'm a civil engineer. And I'm also a member and registered member with National, uh, Nigerian Society of Engineers. I'm also a member of uh, Council of Regulation Engineering Nigeria. I'm also a project manager by profession, a member of Project Management Institute, also a member of American Project Management Professionals. And this has given me a very strong you know, a very strong base to act with in, in terms of experience, in terms of the more the um, the number of years that I have handled major projects, even a multi-million dollar project here in River State, which I got involved with as a lead engineer. It has given me engineering is 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 a is a subject that actually cuts across everything, and it has given me a base to see how to manage people, to see how to project. What, the, what in turn the people will definitely need to survive. And this gives us the confidence that we can actually put these, these things down, achieve these deliverables, and make sure that in start and finish of our time of in government, reverse people should be able to clap their hands and appreciate that somebody actually led them. We are very confident of our winning. We are very confident of what we have done in River State. We are very confident of the knowledge and facts that we, the capacity and the competence that we have, and we believe that River State at this point needs to change. We have loved the part of um, it's our turn. You know, I've been in government, I've been in this, then it is our turn for us to rule. They say, no, this is, this is, this is totally different. I've seen you know, between 1999 and now, River State has, uh, uh, from the facts that we got, has embezzled 9.3 trillion. And meanwhile, we have Dangote in Lagos, who has just spent 4.3 trillion or more, or in between for a 650 barrels per day petrochemical um, fertilizer plant, a, fe a petrochemical plant, and a fertilizer plant thereabout. And uh, so it's, it's, it's obvious that vision actually speaks louder than just, you know, sitting on power and nothing. The people of River State are, to me, are being impoverished. They are left behind because we have have a leadership issue. All right, and I want to talk a little bit about that leadership issue. I mean, you say you're 37 and you're or, or 36 in your 30s and you're a youth leader. And um, a lot of this discussion, and especially in this, these elections, is the youth turnout or youth participation. A lot of first time voters are coming out to exercise their civic duty. Um, Within uh, the context of the youth, uh, the, the, uh, the criticism is that there isn't enough experience. Maybe there isn't enough carryover. Um, what, is your, what are your plans for the continuity of uh, the past River State government, although it was PDP, and um, right now in, to engage the youth within River State in order to make them feel like they are part of the plan, but also not to scare the uh, older class, so to speak, um, in order to make them feel as though things will be completely shaken up and will not be continued or followed according to plan. What are your, your plans for continuity? Okay, first of all, um uh, my age is 38, oh, okay. and uh, we're not apologies. going to capitalize the, the leadership of um, uh, the leadership of River State based on age, but on competence, on capacity, on character, and on right visions. That is what I think um, River State needs at the moment. And then in terms of experience, when you say experience, ex nobody, no contestant today has the experience of being a governor, because none of them have been, have been governors before, you know? So we are all experienced in our own separate um, field, of, uh, uh, field of profession. You know, we have more, more even of career politicians than even professionals. I'm a professional. I've had experience. I've been in, I've been in construction for 
uh, over 13 years. I've been in all level of construction. I've done quite a lot of, I handled multi-million uh, multi million Naira um, projects. I have led hundreds and hundreds of persons in terms of project management, and I have started projects and I've finished them in due, in due course. So when you say experience, I have a whole lot of experience. To lead. The government is about administration and policy. They're about. And I think with the level of knowledge that I have and the level of the people, the intelligent people around me, we were able to, we are good. We are good to take River State to where it ought to be. And we believe that we being, YPP, the Young Progressive Party, and myself being uh, selected or being the, the person in turn to win the election, River State will tend to move to a better land market, a place where she ought to be. You know, presently we have several contestants who have been promising a lot. Yes, we know a lot of promises, but I usually say from 1999, these promises have been made. People have said quite a lot of things. I would have not even run, come out to run for the seat of the governor if I was not feeling betrayed. Abraham Lincoln said, whatever you don't do now, you will regret in 20 years. So I told myself, I can't keep quiet. Looking at the level, the poverty line of rivers is 23.9%, according to MBX. You know, and this is going that, it should, according to population growth, by 2035, 7 million more people will be added to river states. And if nothing is done, if river state is not taken from um, consumption to production, then basically what we'll be seeing is that we're going to be brooding uh, kidnappers and robbers of about four, three, three to four million persons. This is going to deeply affect the state and hinder the economic uh, situation of the state. I don't believe River State had insecurity issues. What we have largely is unemployment issues. We've seen it quite, uh, quite, quite functional in our, in our communities where former supposed militants have been given um, positions in terms in government or in rulership positions to lead their communities and then the whole violence ceases. You don't hear any form of crime or any form of issues. Even the people, the supposed people that are under them, everybody is calm because for example, for, for sure, their leader has something to do and then they have, they also have some. So it means that once you engage the people of Rivers in some form of production, I always tell you use Boni local government in Rivers as a case study. Basically, if you go there, you will have a very minimal level of Boni indigent found within the Portacourt metropolis. You only see a very few, um, if you, uh, if you, uh, you see more of other LGAs. But in Boni, you, 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 you find less of them in Portaco. Why is this happening? Because basically, there's a large number of industrialization that is in their community. There's NLNG, there's um, Saipan, there's um, Mobile, Julius Beck. There are lots of industries in that place. Within 1999, arguably, if you have ever noticed, uh, among maybe the crimes, the kidnappers and robbers, dead or alive, that the law enforcement agency has caught one way or the other. If you have noticed, among if, if for example, they catch 10 persons today, you will hardly almost not notice that among these 10, okay, these two here or this one lying down here or sitting down here is a bony indigent. It is surprising. It is something that we have looked at and say, why is this not happening? Now, I'm not saying that they don't have not heads in that place. Yes, they have, but it's very minimal. The truth is that a large number of bony indigents and being factual about them they are involved in some form of productivity or not. But the remaining part of River State are not in, in being engaged. They are not enjoying that part. They are not seeing the reason for it. There's no there's no place to put the youths. So they wove around, they do things that they get involved. So you see what is the what 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 you find them mostly doing is go around certain politicians, you know, and then you see the only surviving industry right now in River State is politics. So you see, if, for example, a commissioner come, a group of boys will come around them. These are boys between 30, 35, 25 to 40 years, and you hear things like, my chairman, my chairman, my chairman. This is annoying. It's, 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 it pricks me. It hits me so hard. Seeing that youths that should be productive in their age are meant to be doing things at this time of their life to promote the lifestyle or promote the economic of River State are moving around collecting stipends. You know, so these are the reasons, these are, these are the things that has hurt us as a party, Young Progressive Party, and hurt me as an individual and as a candidate to say, no, these things has to change. We cannot sit down and, 
and watch these things go. So on the 18th, our elections are coming. We are very confident and very sure. We are not minding who, because it's not about your strength. It's about the capacity. It's about the numbers. It's about the people. What is, what does the people, what do, what do the people want? Who are they looking at? Who do they feel or perceive can change things for them? That's what they're looking at. It's not about how long you have, and I, I don't call any party big party, because the only reason why you can call yourself a big party is because you're, you're operating government funds. We have a level of capacity, and we've shown our strength so far. Mr. Manike Briggs, thank you so much for that. Now, you've talked about how you plan to develop River State, but I'd like you to touch on an issue, which is the issue of environmental degradation. We know that that's quite um, rife in the South-South region, which River State is one of. How do you plan to tackle issues of environmental degradation, oil spills, and other hazards that, um, that are common in River State? I think when priority are given to certain things, it, can, it will be tackled and it will be taken care of. You know, not until the last administration, this present administration uh, took a strong turn on stopping the level of um, hazard that has been in, in terms of, um, uh, what do you call it, illegal bunkery that has been affecting uh, the state, you know, it affected a lot of health, it affected a lot of people, children and all that. You could, everywhere in our houses where we had suits and all that. So, you know, until, the, until a strong uh, um, force or strong decision was taken, those things did not actually, um, actually go down. So, so it shows, what I'm trying to say is that it shows that once a government is ready to put things right, you put things right. And you don't discipline people from those that are subordinate. You discipline the, whoever stands to be the leader. So we will not take things lightly in terms of our environment, in terms of hazards, in terms of those things that is going to create um, 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 hazards that will scare away investors or uh, scare away people from getting involved in the state. We are going to follow these things with professionals from all over the world that we have already started talking to. We have had uh, good understandings with them. We are drawing out good plans on how to bring these people in to see that most of this hazard in terms of illegal boundary, in terms of um, the uh, deficiencies we have in our waterways, causing a lot of hazard will be taken care of. These are prime things that we will make sure that will be put in place. Mr. Wanike Briggs, I just want to understand you very clearly. Are you giving the Yesom Wiki administration thumbs up on how they've, um, um, on how they've tackled environmental degradation in River State? Uh, it, basically, when you say giving the use of week administration thumbs up, well, I'm not playing or playing that kind of politics where, you know, when you see something that is good somewhere or something that is helpful somewhere, uh, you don't pick from it. I learn from anything. I learn for a living, actually. So basically, I, I picked things before I came into the system. I took it. I, 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 we drew out a plan, my team and I, and we looked at what Jet Spiff has done. And we picked out all the best, he, you know, the, the best uh, of things that he did. We picked out what Melford Okilo did, and we, we, we selected the best things. We went to uh, Odile, we did the same thing with Amechi, we did the same thing. So it's not going to be different from Yosuwiki. We will take those strong, those strong, because the government has to be very, very strong in taking decisions. And I think I give that, you know, when it comes to being fair, uh, you know, disciplined over, you want these things to happen, then you have to, there's no need to cajole or uh, play around or fidget around decisions that are affecting the state. It's not a personal thing. So we're not giving credits to anybody, but we are picking the best. You know, we're picking what we think is necessary to make River State grow because River State is the parity. The people of River State is the parity. This ideology has kept River State in the position where there is no continuity. For example, past administrations have done things that this present administration refused to continue because, why? They feel that um, they, they did rubbish. But the truth is that these things would have helped. These things would have been um, functional in River State. It would have done what, if you, if the, the, the part that would have helped in education would have helped. The part that would have helped in transportation would have helped. But you left them like, oh, money wasted, time wasted, River State being affected, and at the long run, you have nothing. So, we're not going to do it. In the, in, in the Western world, there's, there's continuation. It should, everybody will give account for what you have done, and then we'll see how we can continue on that to improve it. Except the project does not have any meaningful 
um, um, reason to function, then we, we, we let it go. But questions will be asked towards such things. Well, engineer Dana Gogo Owenike Briggs, the River State YPP gubernatorial candidate, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and all the best with your campaign. Thank you.